You know, the guys that don't have a lot of experience with women, those are the ones that usually walk away after one or two comments. And the women who don't have the experience with men, mm -hmm. they don't understand that that's just men. That's just testosterone. He'll, he, that'll pass. That'll pass. Yeah. You know, I've had certain women be like, well, I don't want nothing to do with you. I said, yeah, that's emotion talking. And emotions pass. I said, when that passes, my number is still the same. Mm -hmm. And then they'll call back and they'll apologize like five days later. I'm like, apologize for what? That's how estrogen works. I fully understand that. We don't have to recap. We talk from now. How are you doing today? And we go on from there. I don't consider the fact that you just cursed me out four days ago. I just smile because I know that's how estrogen works. When that man comes home and he's mad and he punches holes in the wall, he's not a violent man. That's how testosterone works. All men's games are games of conquering and destroying the other person. Be it checkers, be it chess, be it football. It's taking from you. And that's what men do. That's just testosterone. All our, chess is a game of war. All of our games are games of war in some way or another. Yeah. All of them. They're games of war. That's just how testosterone works. So if you notice how testosterone works, while, she, while he's punching holes in the wall, she's like, did you want tacos or burritos tonight, honey? And he, right when he's in the middle punch, uh, two tacos, please. Um, um, no onions this time. Pow! Pow! He's not going to hit her. That's right. how testosterone But a woman that's not used to dealing with how testosterone works, she'll be frightened by that. When that woman, when you ask that woman, how was your day? And she just starts screaming and crying. She doesn't need Paxil. She doesn't need Xanax. <laughs> that's estrogen working. That's how estrogen works. Like when I use the gorillas as the example. When she starts crying, you just massage her and go, did you want tacos or burritos tonight, honey? I don't care if I never go back to that job and burritos, honey. I just want one. Can you, like, you know, less onions this time and, and don't burn it like you did last time. And she'll turn right <laughs> around and go, uh, let her finish crying. She has to cry just like he has to punch the wall. There's yeah. this estrogen and testosterone. But if you're a man and you're not used to seeing that, you'll say your wife is crazy. You'll say that she's highly too emotional. No, she's not. She's naturally being herself. When you are a woman that's not used to being around men, you will say that my son, my man is misogynist. He has an explosive temper. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Men and women react differently to different things. It's not because of the sexes. It's because of the chemical that my brain produces called testosterone. It's the polar opposite to the chemical that your brain produces. Correct. Called. That's all it is. And they so don't understand. Yeah, no, they don't understand. And I want to go into this because we're going to get into some of these audience questions. So when you are approaching a woman, Mickey, is there a difference between, and I, I'm pretty sure you're going to say yes, but maybe you'll say no and surprise me. Is there a way when you approach the woman, is there a difference between when you know, hey, this is probably going to be a one night stand or, hey, this I, I want to have a relationship with this girl uh, for a little bit of time, at least. It depends on the circumstances, situations. If I'm on a cruise ship, I know that's a one night, two night right. stand. If I'm um, in a one night, two night stand type of situation, and that, that that situation to me is only when, and I'm using a definite article, only when we are forced from circumstances by circumstances to part ways. Yeah. So if I in there, let's say I go to a publishing convention in New York, she's from Miami, I'm coming out of L.A. This, there's no relationship here. You know what I mean? Right. The most we have is a couple, a couple of nights, of nights. Together, a night together and maybe a telephone friendship. So I will make it very passionate, straightforward, and aggressive then. As we start our telephone relationship, now we're friends. Now the question is like, where'd you go to school? I don't ask those questions because we only have maybe four hours together. Right. Well, because you came here for a reason to this convention. You have things to do. I'm at this convention for a reason. I have things to do. But we're in the same hotel. So we have maybe from 8 to night to maybe what? 6 in the morning? 5 in the morning? So I don't really have... One night stands, to me, is just rejection after the fact. Because why have a one night stand when I can turn this into a 10-year stand? Correct. And you can still meet with that woman if you're nearby or she's nearby you. Why try to cut the tides and f screw it up? 
I have a woman like that now. And uh, she's my, I guess, one day stand. Because she goes on cruises mm -hmm. like every 60 days. And she docks in Ensenada. Mm -hmm. Well, I live in Rosarito Beach. That's just an hour away. So we have the whole day together every two months. I get her back to the ship. Really, it's a six hour because it's eight hours, but I don't like to play. I don't, I don't want to play it that close. Sure. You know, so I get it back at least two hours before the ship docks. And I'll see you in two months. We'll talk until then, but I'll see you in two months. What she does with her life, I'm sure she has other things that she's doing. That's her business. Mm -hmm. She only enters my life for one day every two months, two, three months. Maybe she don't go on the cruises next one. Maybe she might, it, but whenever she goes, she goes to the same place. She lets me know. Boom, bam, boom. And then until then, we text and talk. Yeah. And we might spend the whole day together. It's horseback riding down there. It's, uh, we eat, of course. I always tell her, come off that ship hungry. Okay, I don't want you to have already eaten. And then you sit, make sure you're hungry because I have an ideal place I'm taking you. And I have much, I have a lot of notice before she comes. So she's like, it's like heaven on earth. She said, when she has, to, she's actually disappointed when she has to get back on the ship. I said, one of these days I'll stow away with you. <laughs> but if they catch me, I don't know why they throw me overboard, but <laughs> I have the beds and then closets. I mean, I can stow away <laughs> with you. Just come back here. I said, just as an adventure and something to write about later. I, I tell people I have to do these things, then I write about them. But if, I, I say, so yeah. I don't know what it's like to stow away aboard a ship, but I'm gonna find out. And then I might be in the captain's office and they're facing charges going, you know, this was a bad idea. I did not think this through. <laughs> <laughs> I have too many moments like my life. I did not think this one through. <laughs> this was a bad idea, <laughs> but it's something to write about later. Like, kid, right. never store away on. <laughs> they charge you double the fare and arrest you. <laughs> but I don't know what's gonna happen until I do it. Right. Or my James Bond lifestyle. So it's another. <laughs> Let's see what happens. So, Mickey, let me ask you this. Uh, Al Pacino, who is one of one of the best actors, at least personally, that I know growing up, been in multiple, you know, great movies uh, ever, I would say. He's, I believe he's in his 80s now. He's in his early 80s or late 70s. And he yeah. is now going out with a 28-year-old girl. I want to get into this. Uh, because I saw this a lot in Boca Raton, you know, South Florida. We're seeing that these guys, and you talked about it briefly earlier on in the interview, where these older men that, you know, they're 50, 60, 70 years old, they're gone. And we see this with Robert Kraft of the Patriots. Uh, many other rich white guys, too, are doing this. Uh, 70, 60, 70, 80 years old, they're going out with these 20, 30, 40-year-old women. So let's talk about that. So in Pacino's case, where he's, I think he's like 81. I'm, I'll check on that when you're talking. Um, but he's going out with a, a, a woman that's 55 years younger than he is. Is that love? <laughs> or is that just what we think it is? And it's just no, about I, money and making out? No, because I see guys without a lot of money. Well, I, I have two friends here from the States. Okay. Here. They're married. Both are married to women under 26. Both have wow. children. They're both actually 58 years old. And I can tell you why you're going to see that a lot. Remember early on when we talked about quelling that inside of you, the, uh, how balls are illegal in the U.S.? See, before that law was implemented, Pacino was already a man. Yeah. He doesn't know how to be emasculated. See, that happened after his time. Before his time, Shaft was a man. John Wayne was a man. These were men. That's, those are the men that he grew up becoming. Now, when you institute this no balls thing, well, he's already 35 years old. He can't do it that way. That's for the newer generation. So what's innate in her, that estrogen in her, that man that she wants, she doesn't find it in people her age. She goes for the older man. It's not, she's attracted to him. She's attracted to what's inside of him because she hasn't seen it in her age group. So he's she's, 82 and she's 28. Yeah, she'll see it in the older age group. She wants a man, like probably like her father was before that law was instituted. Her brother doesn't have it. Her brother's over there playing video games and he's 35. 
He's playing with toys. Her father wasn't playing with toys at 35. He was almost retired from one job, and he was a Vietnam veteran. He had already lived a certain amount of life. He had already had his house, his family established. He didn't spend a lot of money on frivolous things. He came home every night. He was already a grown-up at 35. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, she may be 35, and she may be a grown-up, but no one in her age group is a grown-up. They're arguing on TikTok. I mean, can you imagine Clark Gable on TikTok? No. Imagine beat me. Can you imagine Shaft on TikTok? No, definitely not. Him? No. <laughs> These are men who work with their hands, who work with their minds, who created and established things. So she has to go where that quality is. And the only place she sees that quality are men who became men before the emasculation rule was implemented. Now, it happens the same thing to men, too. I hear this from men. Because my first wife, well, I've only been married once. She's 12 and a half years older than I am. I was 28, she was 40. We're both from the life, but she's considerably older than I am. And she asked, I told her at the time, I like tall, older women. And I like, to, if, if it's gonna be a younger woman, closer to my age or uh, considerably below, because age limits really aren't an uh, issue for me. <laughs> I don't want to get into detail, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> and we we'll call it, um, it's a quality I look for. And she asked me, why do you, I get hit on by nothing but young men. They'll be 19, 20. I'm in my 40s. She said, when I was 19, 19 year old men didn't hit on me. Their daddies did. She said, but why are these young men coming after me? I said, would you like to know? And she said, yeah. I said, because we look for femininity. See, the testosterone in us is attracted to femininity. When I, like I told my son, I said, you have on tennis shoes. Your girlfriend has on tennis shoes. You have on blue jeans. Your girlfriend has on blue jeans. Right. You have on a, 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 a sports jersey. Your girlfriend has on four jerseys. You don't have a girlfriend. You're just screwing one of your homies that doesn't have a penis. That's all you're doing. <laughs> your hair is braided. Her hair is braided. That's not a girl. No, but see, her mom. I want you to look at the way her grandmother dresses. Her grandmother is like Mae West. Mae West is 60, 70 years old with her boobs out going, won't you come see me sometime, big boy? You, you, do you see the picture behind me? It's in front of me, but on the thing, you see uh, that? Yeah, is? yeah, 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 yeah. I see okay. Marilyn Monroe, yeah. Right. You notice I don't have Kim Kardashian or, <laughs> or, or it, the next one might be Farrah Fawcett. You know why? Look at her yeah. eye. She's right. so feminine. She ignites the testosterone in me. You want to protect her. You want yeah. to please her. You want to this, that, and the other. Why would I want to please some chick that, hey, pal. Why don't you come over? No, you can fight your own battles, homie. All right, my brother. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> and that quality in that picture behind me, that's a, a, I think it's 20 by 36. It's huge of Marilyn Monroe in my house. It's not the way she looks. She had a gut. She, oh, I didn't know that. Well. Yeah, if you see her, like, she's not, like, super built. Manny Van Doren and all those bombshells of the 50s. Look at this. Look at them. They have stomachs. And that Phyllis oh, Jones doesn't have one. I don't have her picture up. Why? Because she doesn't have the same amount of femininity that woman does. Marilyn Monroe will always be not a sex object, but a sex symbol. Why is she a sex symbol? You've never seen her in any porn. Why is she a sex symbol? Because she activates something innate that's in testosterone. Just like the gorilla saving the uh, baby, the female gorilla. That's estrogen. She ignites that. You want to run across town and grab her the perfect flower. You know why? Because I don't care if you give her a car or a flower. Her reaction is going to be the same. Oh, wow. A paper clip for me? I have so many papers at home I need to clip. You are the best. You know exactly what a woman wants. You know what that man does then? If you think that's something, wait right here. He runs out and gets more. <laughs> and his whole life will stuff back and forth just to see that femininity. So that's why you find guys in their 20s going after women in their 50s. Mm -hmm. Because they want a woman, not a, I have on Air Jordans. She has on Air Jordans. <laughs> I have on jeans, she has on jeans. <laughs> and that's why you see a lot of men, especially in America, turn into other men. And I would call it, and what you call it, um, a female friend of mine asked me that. She said, I lost my man to a man. I said, maybe he wanted somebody more feminine. <laughs> and I said, I I just waited for her to cast it. Maybe he wanted someone more, a little more feminine. You ever see the way transsexual men and gay men act? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I broke up. Go ahead. They, they, I said, you ever hear the way, you ever see the way transsexual and gay men act when they're with their yeah. partner? They're very feminine, aren't they? <laughs> you ever see that um, biological woman? I can open the door for myself. Hey, oh. See, what she's doing is emasculating his natural testosterone. He has to open that door. He has to stay in front of There's something inside of him. If you don't let him do that, he's going to go where somebody let him. That could be a 55-year-old woman who knows how to be a lady. She wears heels. A 55-year-old woman doesn't have on tennis shoes. These girls don't know how to walk in, in, in heels. They have on tennis shoes. My homeboy has on tennis shoes. But see, your mom... Your mom has on heels, and look at the way she walks in them, which lifts her butt, exposes her calf, and we walk a certain way so it makes her hips sway. So while I'm sitting here next to my girlfriend and we're totally dressed the same, my eyes are going, what a woman. <laughs> your mother and your grandmother is a woman. You're just my homeboy who doesn't have a penis. You're just my castrated cow. That's all you are. <laughs> That's why the younger ones go for the older men, the younger ladies, they see that quality, that gentleman, that James Bond, that Sean Connery. And that's why the younger men do the exact same thing. They're not looking for mothers. They're looking for women. This ain't a woman that, that, that that's the homeboy who got castrated. She's drinking a beer, I'm drinking a beer. I don't care what she drinks at home. That's at home. I'm drinking a beer out of a bottle, she's drinking a beer out of a bottle. We toasting them like that. That's not my lady. <laughs> that's my castrated pal. <laughs> That's so true, though. I mean, I know we're having a laugh about it, but it's so true. My, my, my ex used to wear her hair in a ponytail. It's very long. She's Brazilian and Greek and stuff, so she has a lot of hair. With me, I would always say, don't wear that ponytail with me. Don't wear that ponytail with me. You wear it down. One way, you can either flat iron it or wear it curly, but you, it has to be down. She doesn't wear tennis shoes with me. She wears heels. Right. I wear dress shoes. I have one pair of tennis shoes. They cost me $10 at Walmart. They had that little yellow on. I've had them for three years now. I wear them to the gym. I come home, take them off. I either wear, I, all, I have dress shoes, I have loafers, I have sandals. I don't wear tennis shoes. Why? Because I'm not going to play baseball. But I promise you, I'll put that, I, if you want to play softball at the park, I'm, I'm fine with that. That's when I'll put my tennis shoes on. I don't walk around it because I, I don't wear jeans. I don't own a pair of jeans. Yeah. I have slacks and I have sweats and I have this pair of basketball shorts that I wear to the swimming pool. You know, I have my trunks under it, so easy on, easy off. Because when you put your stuff back on, you're kind of damp. So I, I put on the, sh the shorts and stuff. That's it. Everything I wear is a slack. I'm not dressed up for this interview. This is the way I dress. Yeah. I dress out of my closet. This is what I have. Mm -hmm. Where am I going today? Probably, I keep mentioning this place, and I'm not trying to give them a commercial, but it's right down the block. I'm probably Walmart. And uh, <laughs> I might go by the fish market. And because I, I buy my fish fresh, I don't eat any, the only meat I eat is fish, and the only fish I eat is salmon and tuna. Mm -hmm. Anything other than that, I don't eat bread. I, I have a very strict diet, so it's just certain things. I don't eat chicken or beef or pork or nothing like that. So Why go, is that? I've gotten to an older age, and I like the way it feels inside of me. This is my last year actually eating fish, because I do the protein shake, so I get my protein. I've always wanted to be vegetarian, mm -hmm. but I couldn't really be full vegetarian because I couldn't cook well enough. So I don't eat vegetables out of a can. Now that I've learned how to prepare, my, most of my meals are Mediterranean. So mm -hmm. now I never knew kale could taste so good. I had to cook it. Right. You know, I, I never knew spinach could taste so good. I never knew about eggplant. And, but I yeah. have a whole array of stuff I make now. I eat constantly, but it's it's primarily vegetables. But the salmon, that's that's good for me to make the transition. You know, because I haven't eaten uh, the other kind of meat in years now. But I just, yeah. salmon and the tuna, I, I cook my tuna. But you've been on different diets. You've been on the paleo diet. And yeah. I know when you were in, when you were in prison, you didn't eat any meat. What was it? You didn't eat any meat or you didn't eat any sweet? I, I went on the, um, when I was in prison, I went on the Atkins mostly. Okay. So what, is, what is that though? What, uh, I mean, I heard of it, but. The only carb I would have is in the morning. That would be oatmeal. Yeah. Other than that, no matter what they serve, I would trade it with protein or fruit or apples. Look, I give you all the macaroni and cheese if you give me those three apples. They're like, are you serious? I'm always serious. And they're like, okay. And I, I get my apples and, and I had plenty of meat. I ate a lot of red meat in prison. I had a lot of access to it, but I didn't eat much bread. So I only put myself on two slices of bread a day. So when I made my bologna sandwich, I'm not exaggerating. They had like 16, it was like this big. <laughs> it was like, because 
if I make normal size sandwiches, well, that's basically a loaf of bread. Yeah. So if I'm gonna eat bread, I'm gonna get one or two slices. So I had to make these the shaggy from school yeah. sandwiches. And that was my one sandwich that day. Other than that, I would just grab the whole pack of meat and just eat into it. Yeah. And when it came to vegetables and fruit, oh, oh, I ate as much as I could, but it was primarily meat. It was more so, you know, red meat. But how did you get, because, you know, I was listening to all the interviews, and I know we spoke quite a few times about all this stuff, but when you were in prison, how did you navigate through all that stuff? Because it seems like you navigated fairly well. Well, I have a lot of experience. Yeah. <laughs> behind the wall. I've been going in now since I was 13. I, I, I do well in there. And you, you, I mean, so you, you buy it from the people who work in the kitchen. I had a, a, a cheeseburger in prison because I ran into some buns. We don't really have buns, we have bread. I ran into an actual hamburger bun. So I saved it and I bought the biggest cheeseburger I ever had with real cheese because, you know, the guys, you know, they're entrepreneurs. Yeah. So you can always buy stuff from the people who work in the cafeteria. I had six patties on there. The patties were big. I couldn't even, oh, I said, Oh my God, I've never seen it. Most I've ever had in my life is three. It's like a triple burger. This, this was six. And I was like, how do you even, I was like, I had to do it at a, a certain angle and it was so good with the melted cheese. So no, you buy, you make trades. We do a lot of bartering. Mm -hmm. And in California prison, since they outlawed the um, cigarettes, our, our, our commerce or what is it? You know how America's on the petrol dollar? Yeah. Our, our standard of currency is noodles. Oh. You know, the soups, the uh, like yeah. ramen noodles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how everything is measured. You want to buy a haircut, that's maybe three or four soups. You know, two if you, you know, we call them soups, but you know, yeah. and you use that as currency. Everything trades in soups. So I could trade soups for meat. I can literally control my diet once I stop eating the soups. <laughs> Right. That's literally taking like a two dollar, a ten dollar bill and just, <laughs> just eat it. No, this is money. So I would trade those for things to stay on my, you know, my diet. But I only did that that last year, and then I just kept it going. That was the paleo, and yeah. I stayed on the paleo diet when I got out. And now I'm just moving towards just straight vegetarian. You know, meat is kind of. I'm fifty years old. You know, you slow it down. You know, right. and I don't graphic for your viewers, but let's just say. You don't want plumbing issues in the pipes. Right. Flow through to the end. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I eat nice. yogurt and I have prunes a part of my diet because I like things to flow smoothly. <laughs> and vegetables, fruits and vegetables seem to flow a lot more smooth than Big Macs and stuff. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not good. Yeah, it's an internal issue. Because I wanted to get into this when you were talking about Pacino and stuff. So... You know, I agree with you because personally, you know, there are some older women that are in the 40s and 50s that look just as good and yeah. the, then, then the girls in their 20s and 30s. So, And I, I will attest to that 100%. But don't you think, like, some of it... See, like, as, a, as me, as, you know, as a person that, you know, obviously I've looked at women that are in their 40s and 50s and some are, like I said, really great. But for, for a guy like me, it's not really about money. I, it's more about what you said with the femininity. And the, I mean, that's, I guess, the only way I can explain it. But I feel like for a girl, it could be either or. It could be about the money. Because there's a lot of sugar babies in Boca Raton uh, where I went to college. I mean, it's a big money area. Uh, there's a lot of money down there. There's a lot of these hot young girls, 19, 20 through 28, 20, you know, and they can go down there. And I know a couple of the girls, I'm friendly with some of these girls. I went to college with them and they can make, they make some pretty damn good money on on OnlyFans and being sugar babies. So, you know, some of it I feel like is what you said, but I also feel like there's that money aspect too, because the economy sucks you. right now. Let me tell you, if it's about money, why don't you go after a football player? He's her age. He's physically fit and he has a lot of money. See, it's about the money and. The money and. Because you know what the difference is? The football player, he's going to bring her some Air Jordans. Come on, pal, let's go play some this and that. See, he, the, the manly quality he missed. He has the money. But the manly quality, she wants both. She'd rather be with an older man that made a million than a football player that made 10 million. 
He's her age, but he doesn't have this that she's looking for. See, a sugar baby could just be a gold digger. Why are you going to an older mind? You know, it's harder to get an older man than it is to get a young man. You don't impress me with your behind. You know how many naked behinds I've seen in 50 years, especially being in the sex trade? You know how many naked? I've seen more vaginas than any gynecologist has. <laughs> any gynecologist has. Right. You know how many? You're, you're not going to impress me with your naked body. I've seen one or two before. You know, so why she wants the sugar daddy? How come she doesn't want a sugar brother? There are rappers that are 19 years old, 20 years old, that have $30 million. She doesn't want him. He has a lot of money. The yeah. football player has a lot of money. The basketball player has a lot of money. Why does she want the older money? Hmm. Why does she want the older money when she can have the younger money, which is actually more? No, because younger money is not going to treat her like the lady she wants to be treated like, and she yeah. won't look at him like the man he needs to feel like. They're feeding off each other's energy is what they're doing. See, no, you're right, because they want to go to the fancy restaurants and, you and be you too. Yeah, but they wanna I guess I'm I'm I, I'm I'm agreeing with you is that they wanna be treated like a woman, like you said, but you know, they wanna be like wined and dined and and twirled around and dance and do all these uh, fun things. And yeah, the athlete can't produce that, but it's it's different. It's you know why? Yeah. Because he was born after the Ball's Law. Right. He was born after the emasculation law. He doesn't know how. He thinks he's doing that. He's bought her a lot of stuff. He's taken her on trips, but he hasn't made her happy yet. He but when did the balls drop, though? Oh, they weren't dropped. They were they were um, castrated. It wasn't by male choice. Right. It wasn't his choice. It goes back to what you said at the very, very beginning about the anti-man laws in the U.S. And but, it, so this is like around the 70s? No, Shaft was in the 70s. It wasn't even in the 80s. It came much, much after. Much, it, much oh, after. the 90s then, I guess. I would say so, yeah, because you had the talk show craze then. And, you know, I hate to throw names, but I think, you know, I'm not going to throw that name out there, but <laughs> okay. that female talk show host really kicked it off. And it just, it, it turned from a golf ball into a big giant snowball to where anytime a man expresses testosterone, he either needs a psychosis or label. You're massaging, oh, well then you have mental issues. Oh, you need therapy. He doesn't need therapy. He's, that's testosterone. Right. Now, if you want him to quell or suppress something that's naturally in him, and he goes years trying to please you by doing that, well then you have Will Smith. Yeah. Then you have explosion. Then you have Columbine. One wedgie too many. They couldn't take it. The first wedgie, you turn around and punch the guy in the face. What if I lose? You don't understand. To stand up to a bully, you've already won. Doesn't matter if you win the fight or not. You've already won the fight. Mm -hmm. You've already won the fight the second you hit him. Now, if he plummets you, it doesn't matter. You've already said the buck stops here and you do it. But see, you know what happens when you don't do it? You're suppressing something that's natural in you. And then when your wife says pass the salt, you just blow her brains out. <laughs> you, Will Smith was no more mad at Chris Rock than anything else. That was years of suppressing. But they were laughing. If you watch the whole, the Glo Golden Globes rather, he was laughing at the beginning. Then she looked at him and then that's when he made his move. You know why? Because the laughter was his natural response. Right. But then... You can suppress something so long, you don't know how to do it anymore. If you don't do something often, you lose it. So he said, wait, I'm a man. That's not what men do. Men are supposed to go up there and do, okay. So he's processing. But but Mickey, but even hold on, sorry to interrupt, but she was laughing first. Then she saw him laughing. And when she saw him laughing, she gave him a dirty look. And then that's when he made his move. What she did was exercise control. You're right. It was a joke. It could have been, okay, let's say she dropped her handkerchief on the ground or her pen. What she'll do is look at him, look at the pen, look at him, look at the pen. See, what it is is she's, a, that was a narcissist exercising right. their control over something they've always had control over. And what she was saying was, I can laugh, but when you laugh, I didn't give you permission to laugh. You check that free throw thought and you do what this, you do what the remote control tells you to do. So he had said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not allowed free thought. 
I'm allowed to use actions that are coincide with your thought. So it changes and then he does it. It wasn't an instinctive thing. His instinct was to laugh because he's a human. But then he said, wait a minute, and it's that, well, a real man would have, that only works on men with that suppressed testosterone. That doesn't work, on, you can't say, tell Clark Gable if you were a real man. You, you wouldn't say that to Sean Connery. See, they were before the emasculation law. People after the emasculation law, you can use that on them all day to control them. A real man would wake up at two o'clock in the morning and fix me a meal. A real man would go out there and paint the houses up, and you just had that dude just running ragged <laughs> because he doesn't know what a real man does because he was born after the emasculation law. But he can learn. He can learn easily if he just buys this book. <laughs> Buy me to Benjamin, like a Lucy Doe. The pimp game, that's what I talk about. And it works for women too. What it does is we're destroying that anxiety. We're destroying the fact that you struck out before you picked up the bat. That's what, it's an ink blotch test. That's why it's designed this way. That's why the colors are like this. You see what you want to see that's inside of you already. It triggers something in you. It, it, it may have a different effect on the next person, but it will have a, an effect on you and a different effect on this different person because it depends on what has been suppressed in you. And that's what's suppressed in him. So he doesn't know what he's supposed to be doing yet. He has to get his, lack of a better word, his balls back. Right. And I don't mean balls as in aggression. I just mean testosterone. Sometimes testosterone, testosterone is also very nice. Testosterone is why I opened your door. Testosterone is why I pushed your car up a hill while you just walked alongside and wouldn't let you touch it. That's not ego. That's my testosterone that wants to protect. Testosterone is why I jumped in front of that car for you. Testosterone is why I walk on the outside of the street and make you walk on the inside of the street so the car can hit me and not you. So we can't talk about, see, they don't call you misogynist then. No. He's got mis misogynist has been used as a weaponized word. What it means is stop doing what you're doing naturally and do what I want you to do. And it's only so long you can do that. It's just the same way as a woman. Same way as a woman. If, so, if she's trying to uh, suppress her estrogen. I want to end this interview with one last question before we go into uh, the porn industry fast. So last question is, is there a difference... And I, I, I'm pretty sure you're going to say no about this. But is there a difference with you approaching a black woman, white woman, Asian woman, Hispanic woman? Or is it all just about the same? Is it all, you know, you you should eye up your top uh, target first and then kind of go through that? You don't, I don't, I don't separate in types in that way. Okay. It's the way I approach an athletic woman, a motherly woman. A woman with no children who wants adventure, a woman with children who wants something stable. And if you have to put them in, in groups of characteristics because all women are the same. And, but yeah. I'm gonna tell you something, they all smile on Valentine's Day when they get the flowers and candy. They all do, they smile the exact same. It goes just like that. So they all want the same things. It's just that different, want, different things work differently for different people but people are separated by character. I would, I would approach teachers the same way. Now, a teacher with children and a childless teacher, those two different types of women. You know, so I categorize them in their characteristics. I approach talkers. She may be a talker. This one may be, you know, body language. This one may be just totally not interested and she's in a hurry. You know, she's always in a hurry. She's, she's, she has business. This is going on. She's in her. What do you want to say? You got 30 seconds. Pitch. You know, that kind of thing. She may be that type. The other one might be, well, you know, we've only been dating two years. I mean, that's, that rush anything. You have a different pace for each one, but those are just categories and characteristics. You can go to Fiji Islands. You're going to see an alpha female there. You're going to see the motherly type there. You're going to see the chick who really wants off that island and wants to do some of the things she saw on TV and go around the world. You got some who wants to start a family. You got some, you'll find that dynamic anywhere. So that's what I look for. I approach a, a dynamic and I approach characteristics. So I'm not distracted by her race, her occupation, 
the way she's dressed. No, because that's the way she's dressed Friday night. You didn't see her Saturday night when she had some tennis shoes on. <laughs> you, you see her heels tonight, but that's not who she is. That's who she is tonight. I mean, man, I thought you liked to play basketball. You met me one day and I was actually playing basketball. Not a basketball player. I don't even like basketball, but I was out there with a few friends and we were shooting around. But you might think, oh, Mickey likes basketball. No, why? Because we had a two hour interaction. I had on shorts that day. The day before I had a Versace suit. You didn't see that. You think I played basketball in that? So you can't go off of what you see visually in front of you that day. But she's an angry woman. Why? She got into it with the clerk. She's angry now. You think she goes home and just screams into her closet 24 hours a day? No. That is just how she is at this particular moment in time. Watch me change her mood. I said, pay attention. Watch this. <laughs> I said, because she's going to go through different moves throughout the day just like you and me. Yeah. Just like you and I. You catch me. That's why I tell people most of it is timing. Mm -hmm. Most of it is timing. You struck out with that girl who liked you because it wasn't the right time. But if you so, see a girl and maybe you want to approach her, but maybe you're running into a meeting or you just don't have that time, like you're just stating, do you just say, you know, hey, I got to call it a loss. I'm not even going to do this because I just. I've done, gonna... I've done things like, how long are you going to be here? And she's like, I'm going to be here all night. Mm -hmm. My date just upset me and said she wanted to go home. I'm coming right back up here. Do not move from this spot. I'm seriously interested in being with you. We're going to leave here. And we're going to go to the Cheesecake Factory. And she said, what? I said, you want me to repeat myself? Was I too low? She said, well, I might leave before then. I said, then I will have missed you. Then I'll hurry. And then I, when I came back, she's sitting there. And not only when I came up, she's looking around. I always keep my word. And I said, come, let's go. <laughs> Where? Someplace you've never been tonight. Let's go. You know? And she was like, well, I don't feel comfortable just getting in any man's car. I said, here's my driver's license. Okay? <laughs> Here's my ATM card, and I wrote down the PIN code on it, and I said, if anything happens, you are for sure ride home, and you run to the nearest car. I said, I have like 19 convictions on my record. You can make up any bizarre crime, and they'll believe you. <laughs> I'm actually wanted in a few places. I said, you take that license, you just run off. Whatever you tell the police, they're going to believe you, and they, that door is going to come flying off my hinges. I said, now I have to trust you. I right. said, how scared do you feel now? She said, I don't feel scared at all. I said, now I didn't come again. Let's go. So, and then, and then I said, just remind me, because I have a bad memory, to get my license back from you. I said, on the date, I said, why don't you hold the car keys? That way, I cannot leave you here. Yeah. You can leave me here, but I can't leave you here because you have my keys. I said, mm. hey, you, feel, you feel safer now? Well, yeah, yeah, that's I such said, a good play. You know, I've done that more than once. I feel, I mean, if I go somewhere with you, you can leave me stranded. Not if you have the keys. <laughs> and better yet, you have a driver's license? Yeah. Why don't you drive? 